Hi, I'm Danger Dan Jers, the host and GM of the D&D Real Play podcast, d and Dark. Join us on Wednesdays for an absurd, over-the-top comedy horror adventure starring some of history's most infamous monsters. I'm Ben Magnet. I play Mary Frankenstein, our barbarian. I am Daniel Cruz. I am playing Imhotep the Mummy, our cleric. I'm Jordan, and I play Larry Talbot, a lycanthropic warlock. I am Grayson, playing Jack Griffin, the Invisible Man, the party's rogue. I am Aaron. I play the Phantom of the Opera, our bard. For more information, go to dndarkpodcast.com and listen to us anywhere you find podcasts. Hey everybody, this is Davis over at the CFG and I would like to welcome you to another episode of Pop Culture Gems. This is a series where we talk to amazing creators, artists, cosplayers, voice actors, and so much more. Uh, If you like the interviews we do uh, with our amazing guests, give us a thumbs up or subscribe to our YouTube channel, the CFG channel, or you can go to either our main website, confreaksandgeeks.com, or listen to it on any podcast services out there. Today... My guest is a wonderful VA that has been in several Funimation shows. Her range of characters can be the incredibly funny or ridiculous like Nene Sakura from New Game and Yatsubo Nukano from the quintessential quintuplets to being motherly like Zenith Grey Rat and uh, Mushoku Tensei Jobless Reincarnation to the downright complex like Krista Lentz, a.k.a. Historia Reese from Attack on Titans. I would like to welcome Bryn uh, A. April to the show. How are you doing today? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing this. It's always fun. It's always I always love talking to uh, to awesome uh, voice actors and stuff. So oh, that's really great. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we're we're doing this. How how's uh how you how how are you tre- liking the Texas weather right now? <laughs> Oh my gosh! You know, it's it's really the truth that if you don't like the weather in Texas, wait five minutes. You know, I'll I'll be out in a t-shirt one day, and then the next day I'm like, oh, "Where's my big puffy coat? I need it." It's just oh, it's like in the twenties right now. It it is it is not okay. It is not acceptable. I I do not approve. <laughs> It's so funny. It's like last week you're just, I'm like working out. I have like I'm always wearing like a sh- like shorts and then like like you know like a, like a light long sleeve thing and I'm like oh this is perfect weather. Then literally the, it's like someone just turned on the oh yeah I forgot it's winter and then decided to say we're gonna drop down to twenty something degrees and yeah, it's the like heavens oh. descended and it's just oh not okay. <laughs> My it's poor not little okay. baby boy, he has to bundle up in his little zipper jacket, and he's like, I don't like the zipper jacket. And I'm like, <laughs> you're going to want the zipper jacket, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> you have a fluffy jacket for the, do- for the dog, too? Or? I do. I oh, do. No. He needs it. He's tiny. He doesn't have the body heat that the big boys do. He needs the zippy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is that is funny to even think about. But yeah, I understand. It's a necessity. <laughs> not, not, like you don't have like a don't, don't if you have a sailor uniform with the hat, that might be a different story though. But, okay. oh, oh no! Oh, you would judge me. He, he has a little bit of a wardrobe. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> It's, you know, because my fam- I have family over in uh, New Mexico. And mm-hmm. so, you know, they're higher altitude and it does get even colder than we're experiencing right now. And oh, so yeah. he, he needs to have a little something because he's he's got that fine hair and he gets he gets cold cold. (laughs) there is no judgment from here for me here i mean we people cosplay (laughs) people love to dress up dogs we'll go with that (laughs) he looks dapper he's he's a very handsome boy (laughs) he is it's a it's a nice dog i will admit that i will admit that it's a nice (laughs) dog so fine with people close with him all right but well thank you for coming on uh i would love to geek out with you today so uh let's Let's get this all righty all righty good deal love the energy (laughs) (laughs) all right so like what is like what's your story uh like what's your story on getting into voice acting yeah um i mean i honestly 
I never imagined that I would end up where I have. Uh, my big goal when I was back in high school and honestly, middle school and where I thought I was going to end up was going to New York and I'm doing Broadway. That was, that was the, the headline of my life. I was set. Um, and that was what I had planned to major in for college. I was going to major in musical theater. Um, and I knew what college I wanted to go to. I was going to all the summer camps for that college and everything. <laughs> I had my life planned out. Um, and one of the things that you do is you audition for the programs for those colleges. And it's a really weird audition process. Um, for example, one of the things you have to do is called unifieds. And it just kind of helps some of the students so they don't have to go college to college to college and spend money on all that traveling to audition for those programs. Some of the colleges will come together to one location so they can kind of mass audition. Um, but it's a funky little process where you basically have like two minutes or like one and a half minute to do two songs and a monologue, which is not a lot of time. Uh, so you have to like cut things down and choose like what's really going to showcase your talent the best and like pick the right songs, pick the right cut of those songs. And so I got a coach, of course. <laughs> and my acting coach, after everything was over, we took her out to dinner to say thank you. And she started talking about some of the work that she did in the area. And she mentioned the name Funimation. And me being me, I was like, I know that name. Um, <laughs> because I'd already seen, you know, or on High School Host Club, Fruits Basket. I, I'd, I'd, I knew the name. Um, <laughs> and I was very confused because this is going to sound weird, but I had this skewed idea that all entertainment was done in California. I don't know why I thought that. I mean, I knew that like stage stuff, like community theater and like, um, like nicer theater, like traveled around and, and like stage was everywhere. But I thought that like the big entertainment production stuff was in California. That's it. The end. You know, it's actually funny though. I don't funny, know though, why I thought that. that. Sorry. Well, no, no, no. Well, you know, you. I mean, I think it's fair though. Where you you live in yeah. Texas, and then especially back in the like, you all you see is Broadway, or like anything musicals is in the east, and then in right. the west is production. It's like it's movie production. So yeah, so right, I'll, right, right. Like I'll give the, you a pass. Exactly. Like the the big stage stuff is in New York. The big like film and recording stuff is in California. I that's just how my mind had structured it. I, it just was. Um, but she mentioned that and I was like, I know that. What do you mean it's here? And I was very confused. Um, and she was like, you know what? You should go and audition for them. Like at that point she knew me pretty well and she knew that I was very spastic and that I had a, <laughs> a wide range of, of personality. We'll just say, um, <laughs> uh, and I, I did funky things with my voice and she's like, you should go audition for them. And I was like, Oh, you're so funny. I, I was not taking her seriously. And she's like, no, no, for real. Uh, even if it's just for audition experience, all you've really done is stage. You've never really done anything in front of a mic. It would be good practice just to see what it's like. And I was like, okay. Um, and she really encouraged me. And so I reached out and I got on their open call audition list, which is basically um, like a, for a week, one of the directors will have multiple auditions with people um, for every day that week and kind of just see what they've got. And so I went in for that. And within a couple of weeks later, I started booking stuff. Mm, and then oh, wow. I had to reevaluate my entire plan because <laughs> I was like, oh, I was planning on going to another state for college. And if I want to keep on working with Funimation, that might not be feasible anymore. So it really just whoop, 
left turned my life and you know i don't regret it at all i'm i'm so grateful for every opportunity that's come my way that is it's that is incredible so basically <laughs> like <laughs> you know what, you know that what that that kind of remi- you know it's kind of weird like that story for some odd reason reminds me of like a hallmark christmas special of like <laughs> 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 I mean, <laughs> it's like and you then know, fate we, intervened. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like, so, you know, like, oh, this person is going to is, has plans for a bigger, brighter future until all of a sudden, then it's like, <laughs> <laughs> then the it's universe like, decided. <laughs> 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 so that's a that's a great story i love that it's like uh oh, <laughs> yeah but the, the biggest thing though because like you're totally right once i felt like well when uh i i was introduced to funimation when the first when uh the create the owner of funimation you know bought the rights for dragon ball z back mm. in the 90s and then like uh once i think found that out i realized like man there is like like texas is a huge core for for a subtitle for a voice actors a huge hub because they've had a like adv was here sentai filmworks is also is in down in houston and then uh mm-hmm. and I, just, I had no idea until when they said like <laughs> oh yeah everyone's coming down here and stuff and uh and all the big names were coming down and i was like oh wow okay i guess more, one more reason to be happy to be living in texas so <laughs> <laughs> but uh no that's great that, uh, that's great so what was your what was your first gig uh what was the first gig that you did like um, uh, that you got from Funimation. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, everybody kind of starts with your your preliminary test, which is a Walla session, which is kind of a with all actors. Uh, and that's the street chatter and the, the characters that don't really have names, but just pop in and it's girl 5A and she has one line. And it's just, it's that test to see, okay, can they do this? Because it is a weird process to be able to like, see it once in Japanese and cold read this script because for stage, you know, you, you've memorized your scripts, you're familiar with them. You've seen them for months or weeks or however long in advance with this, you're seeing them for the first time and you're having to match the flaps that you're given in in the J because we can't edit video. And so it's a, it's a learning curve and you have to be able to pick it up. And so you get that test to see, can you pick it up? And so I went in and I did my Walla test. And um, apparently, like, sometimes you'll get multiple Walla tests. Like, you'll have a, wa- a period of doing Walla tests. I just had one. Um, and then right after that, I went in for an audition for Fairy Tale. And I went in for an audition for Day Day Live. And I booked oh, wow. them. Um, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and um for fairy tale i mean that's been going on for forever mm-hmm. so it was uh kind of a new arc and um that was for meldy and mm-hmm. she she was in her baby stage right then so it was perfect because i was coming in as a 17 year old and i still had my little baby voice and so <laughs> it's it's very interesting when you listen to her baby form and then mm-hmm. when you listen to her adult form, there actually is a shift between a younger voice and an adult voice because I did age with her. So it's, <laughs> it's actually very interesting. Um, yeah, it's funny. And then for Kotori for Day Day Live, which was actually a significant character. Like she was yeah. a big named character. And I was like, <laughs> being so green i was like doing like a line and then looking at joel the director for approval doing a line looking for approval <laughs> line approval and he was like you know you do this thing and it's very funny <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, goodness joel, oh, well katori is she was she the she was a little sister slash captain of that weird squad yes. right wow that was yes. your second role Oh my god! <laughs> I, I was I was very green, but I'm so grateful to Joel. He it, they kind of happened at the same time, uh-huh. um, but he he was really the one that was teaching me everything. He was teaching me what the different reactions were. He was teaching me what wild means. He was teaching me really all of the little nuances of 
how to do things and how to read the scripts and y- y- all the little, little tricks like oh if if a character has something in your mouth like how to make it sound like you have something in your mouth or you can mm-hmm. do this and have it sound like you have something in your mouth and mm-hmm. I'm so grateful to him I mean he really gave me my first break and he was actually the one that did my um my audition for my open call audition so oh. he he was the one that discovered me actually <laughs> oh my goodness man that is so crazy that is a lot see I, I, I like that that's a really cool story uh and it seems like i mean like uh like there's, there's like a strong tie-in of like a lot of voice actors studying musical theater or like mm-hmm. wanting to become like theater uh, a theater major or going going on broadway and things like uh to become to becoming a voice actor itself so like what is it what is it in musical theater that makes it a good fit or transition into voice acting yeah um a lot of us come from a stage background um and then there's there's also a large percentage of us who have training in uh vocal performance um but it's it's really the nuances of, of knowing where you should get your support from instead of like really straining your voice because you can't, you just can't afford to, especially for like a very taxing, a vocally taxing show. Like for example, attack on Titan. Um, if you get booked for like a three hour session, which is nothing, three hours is nothing. If you don't know where you're supposed to be getting your support from, you're going to be done in 30 minutes or less. And then you have two and a half hours where they can't use you anymore because you've exhausted your voice and the character is going to sound different than it did when you first came in. So you need to know where you're getting your support. Um, You need to know how to take care of your voice. Um, And then there's just a lot of things. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. So that's the kind of stuff that that, that you learned from musical theater, like what's your, it's just your voice vocal exercises itself like right, keeps because we have to learn about projection and how to get it out there from the stage i mean you can't you can't do stage if your voice is like this big it's just nobody's going to be able to hear you you know mm-hmm. it just doesn't work um so that's one of the skills that you learn and same with vocal performance uh it it's all about coming from that diaphragm and you learn that if you have a good teacher <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, you learn about diction, you learn about, you, you learn all these exercises for warming up, which is very, very, very helpful. It's, it's just really prepared you and it expands your range and that opens up opportunities for you. Like for example, um, I can do characters like this and I can do characters that are a little bit lower in my speaking range. Um, and I can do little boys, you know, it, it's, it just, it doesn't pigeonhole you into like one character type, which is your speaking range character type. You're able to do more because your voice is capable of doing more. And that's true for anybody, but if they don't have the training to like do that in a healthy way to where it's, it's able to maintain that over a long period of time then you know it's just not feasible that is um, fair. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that's then, very fair. i mean with vocal performance i i've also booked characters that have done singing parts you know like for example with show by rock and zombie land saga we've dubbed songs and so that was just another door that was open to me because i knew how to sing and how to you know, sing in a character's voice because I had a good training for like singing in soprano and alto and whatever. And I was able to adjust it to where I was able to sing in like a, you know, whatever, what have you, um, <laughs> <laughs> which isn't the same as like, la, 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 which is a natural sing- sound. So, wow, that is yeah. crazy! I bet you, I bet you enjoy doing that though. <laughs> we gotta be like uh, to <laughs> to be doing songs while doing while while doing a uh, voice, uh, your VA and stuff. I mean, that's pretty cool. I didn't even think it's about it's tricky. That. It's yeah. you know, but 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I'm kind of curious though. Like, uh, like I mean, like what, like when you did like you know theater and stuff like that. Like wh- what, like what kind, like who did you play? Like in theater, like or like, did, or what the what what plays have you done? Uh, oh I mean, yeah, nothing nothing um, big, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've done uh, like Cosette and Les Mis. Um, I've done Joanna and Sweeney Todd. Um, I've done uh, Stella from A Streetcar Named Desire. Um, <laughs> that I've done is the Baker's cool. Wife from Into the Woods. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean. I, I miss the stage. I, I don't do it anymore, but it, it was it was fun. It was a really, really cool part of my life. Oh, I would have loved to see you in, in a Sweeney Todd. <laughs> that would have been very nice. <laughs> As oh, the man. only person that wasn't involved in any killing or being killed. I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you missed out. <laughs> right. Like everyone was dying. <laughs> Everybody oh, else was a part of something, but I was just like, bye, I'm off to the asylum. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe or one could say that you were the smart one because like everyone else was just going into the bedlam of dying. Yeah, I mean I still ended up in the asylum, but you know eh. that is true. <laughs> Yeah, but you're still alive. That's true. That's <laughs> fair. That's a fair point. Just with pads <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, like, uh, were you a, now uh, prior to your career, your VA career, uh, mm-hmm. uh, were you a fan of anime or mangas before becoming uh, be- becoming a voice actor for Funimation? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, it, it. I was still like that kid that would come home and and even like late at night be plopped in front of the TV and like you said watching like the Dragon Ball Z and Bleach and Naruto and it was so <laughs> it's so ridiculous looking back on it because like they were never really played in order they were just played like random episodes so i would have no idea what was going on in the show but I was so intrigued and invested nonetheless. I was just like, this is amazing. I'm, I love this. <laughs> it, was, it was so bizarre. And I, I don't know. I guess that that kind of like spawned the love in me. But um, that's hilarious. And then I, I also have like, I still have these, my little VHS tapes of my Sailor Moon. And like, <laughs> <laughs> I treasure them. They're beautiful. The real question is, do you have a VCR to play said tapes? I do. <laughs> you do? Oh, wow. Okay. I'm a little jealous. Built I have... <laughs> into the TV and everything. Like oh, yeah. a combo Ooh. unit. <laughs> you got are so lucky because I'm, you know, it's funny, I'm trying to find one because I'm like. You can't find them anywhere <laughs> no, no, uh, anymore. That's hilarious. Dragon Ball is a is a weird conundrum to me because like you're totally right. They just they just decided before Funimation decided to say, okay, we got the rights. <laughs> Let's get this done right. Uh like uh they, there was like so many different inter- two different iterations, and they just repeated random episodes as if they didn't like they didn't care like okay kids just watch this <laughs> like the, the PE teacher we're not we doing did. anything today. And we did we did <laughs> we did <laughs> we did you know there's one I would suggest for you to check out it's hilarious it's the ocean dub it's called the ocean dub Dragon Ball Z uh okay. it was yeah it was before Funimation got it but uh but Canadian people like Canadian voice actors did it and uh the funny parts of this is that they did not want to show death in the in, in the anime so w- yeah so what they did was that they made their own voiceovers of when something dies they gave an excuse of what why like what they did so like like you know there's a part where like napa destroys the whole city <laughs> and stuff uh so like he said you see the explosion you see the city disappearing and like being completely incinerated then uh-huh. then you hear someone from the outside like you don't even see the person's face or anything you just hear a random voiceover says oh thank god it was a sunday so no one was there <laughs> like there, there was this <laughs> 
town. They're on vacation. <laughs> it is so amazing because like they do it so often. It was like, like, oh, he destroyed a jet. It's like, look, I see their parachutes coming down. They're safe. And they like every excuse available. This is this was the ocean dubbed version of this. And I was like, I think this is my favorite, my favorite voiceover. <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, <laughs> oh my gosh. We always make jokes when there's like um songs in anime that we we don't dub. Um and then like right before the character starts singing, we should go like, and now I'm going to sing for you in Japanese. And like just have the characters just be like, like randomly they know Japanese now and they're going to sing in Japanese because they feel inspired. And I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> that would be so perfect. <laughs> that is exactly perfect. Oh my god, that is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. If we don't get the rights to do the song, just be like, sing for you in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> then you're like the perfect. You're like the perfect J-pop star. <laughs> oh no, that is perfect. Oh, oh, you you need to make a take of that and save it. <laughs> That's what you need to do. <laughs> oh my god! And the uh, uh, like you've been like crushing it with all the characters you've been playing. Uh, you played so far. I mean, uh, in your oh, career. Thank you. Yes, I've been loving you, loving your uh, uh, your range. You're, it's just crazy. It's it's amazing. Uh, like at the end of the day, uh, like what do you do? to kind of like to unwind from all of that. <laughs> I mean, like from being inside yeah. the office and stuff, like what is it that you uh, like to do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like for a lot of characters, like for example, for uh, like Yotsuba, she, she is like my natural high. And so <laughs> I'm just like, that is how I naturally go about. But um, <laughs> she's like a hundred percent. She always go. She's like going a hundred all the time. <laughs> she never <Yes>. rests. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but to chill out, um, I mean, I I am always searching for new things to watch. I I like, I've always like because I I binge shows and then I'm like, now I have nothing to watch again. Dang it! <laughs> like I don't know why I do that to myself, but I do. I get like so hooked on it, and then I like hyper fixate, and so I have to finish it, and then I'm like. Well, now I'm in the predicament of having nothing to watch again. Dang it! Like, <laughs> yeah, it's um, funny. That, that's the way I I watched uh, uh, Attack on Titan. Actually, I oh like, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, because like after these people were dying, I'm like, man, I don't know if I could just keep up with this straight. I'm gonna wait a couple of years <laughs> until just. Uh, <laughs> so I did. I just start. I started last year. Finally, w- caught up, and I'm like, oh my god, I should just waited all the way to the end. This is crazy, but. Oh my <laughs> god! Oh, but they so like, always what? know just how just how to leave it to where you're like, now I have to watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, see, my problem is it's like uh, with anime, especially like a uh, continuous anime. Like, I mean, fairy tales been going on for over a decade. Now, now there's a break, uh, but we know uh, um, we may get hundred years. We're not sure. If, uh, yeah, I know not yet. And then even if they do, I know you can't tell me. <laughs> but uh, but uh, like like sometimes it's just for me. It's a lot easier just to read, so I can be like, okay, here mm. we go. Let me let me just uh, because I was like, can I invest nine years of my life waiting for this series to come out completely, <laughs> and so I can just read it, and then uh, uh, like uh, like Demon Slayer right now. It's like I have to watch Demon Slayer, uh, mm-hmm. but. Like to myself, I was like, "No, I gotta read what's going on. This is just getting too hype for me to just <laughs> to, to just wait and stuff <laughs> and stuff." So I completely understand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been so far? Hmm? Like what? What have you binged so far? Like what kind of series do you like to binge or oh, do you man. watch? Um, I just <laughs> it's so weird because I I also like I never watch things when they're like peak popularity i'm like eh, i'll get around to it and then i forget for a while mm-hmm. and then i'll be like oh yeah i never watched that and so like <laughs> i just watched the umbrella academy <laughs> like i i just did that um <laughs> and and i i binged the entire thing and i was like and now i'm stuck um, <laughs> <laughs> table flip <laughs> so <laughs> but um yeah, uh, and another thing I do, I mean, you met you met my baby, you met my little my little Pete. Uh, 
he is the best little snuggler in the entire world and he is he oh man who saved who he is a true case of who saved who he gives me so much love and i love him so that is so oh. nice. I love dogs. Yeah. It's like it's like that's like they are the perfect pet for that kind of like oh the affection that you, uh, that they need because they know they'll you know they'll always have your back and they always they'll always love you. <laughs> yes, and he's miss- like my little baby duckling. He just he's he's attached to my side all the time. <laughs> it's the cutest thing. Oh, oh god. Um, fair. <laughs> fair enough. Then- I guess uh, video games. I like to play video games, too. Oh, nice. What do you like to play? Like RPGs, uh, action? Um, The only thing that I will not play is platformer style things because I just get so frustrated. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just like, this isn't fun anymore. I can't do it. (laughs) So I can't. I will not. I I, mm mm-mm. No, nope, but everything else is open. Is open no games. to Mario? You can't play me. You don't like playing Mario. I can't do Mario? it. Oh wow! Oh. I like I can do like the the Mario games, but I can't do like Mario. Oh. <laughs> it's like oh, there it is again, Mario. <laughs> Fair enough. All the table. That's all. The, the, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, and uh, like, uh, what's called? Do you, do you like? Do you play any? Like, uh, do you ever play the any any games that you are in? And uh, like, you know, yourself. <laughs> um, I have been encouraged to like. For example, I'm in like Paladins and Smite mm-hmm. and stuff, and I'm like, I would be so bad at that, <laughs> but I'm willing to give it a go. <laughs> so, I, 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 I might. Um, oh no, April! I just think yeah, the I, perfect idea is if you go on Paladins and then if you leave your mic open and then you're oh. playing the character. <laughs> oh jeez, that, that would be great. That would be perfect. Oh no! <laughs> or like, smite. Repeat right after everything this guy says. <laughs> just like, <laughs> like just talk <laughs> along with her. Like everyone will be like. You're just off script. I, I would know. say, well, like, <laughs> <laughs> you just be off script. It's like, or just like, uh, that would be amazing. It's like, oh no, you now became sentient. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You should, yeah, you should. Wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, he's doing the Turing test. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You need to, yeah. I, if you do that, you would please record that. <laughs> That's just like I, all I'm I saying. am in the process of setting up a twitch channel and it oh. should be done really soon and so that that might be interesting yes that would be amazing <laughs> to, to just go just to see what you would what, what the reactions would be but no, that'd be awesome <laughs> I, I would actually i'm actually intrigued i would watch just to see how you play what your function like how you play your games so that would be pretty cool that would be pretty cool <laughs> it would be a lot of <laughs> oh man you like for me like i i suck at uh horror games like uh, like i <gasps> yes yeah. so you love <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've been oh, playing like so weird but it is although well, it's, it's like you like the shock the shock value but man like it's but like like for some reason resident evil like the remake of resident evil 2 for me it, it, that giant guy that's just following you and just you hear the footsteps and i'm just like uh it, 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 like i was literally streaming one time uh this game and then uh this then you see this giant dude just move a helicopter with this one hand and i'm like uh i'm like oh run the hell away so i'm like running away and i'm like oh okay i'm safe behind this door he opens the door he's like right in front of me and i'm like just <laughs> <laughs> and then like i get beaten down by this guy and i'm like okay i, I just can't <laughs> i just i gave up i just gave up and just it's just this uh me, I'm dead. <laughs> oh yeah but like horror games always freak me out i love playing them but man i i suck at them but and then but everyone says it's gold when people watch me play <laughs> exactly you know that's that's the whole thing like <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> Jesus! Oh, oh yes, I would love to see you play. If you do it, post it on Twitter. I'll be, I'll be right there. I'll watch it immediately. <laughs> 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 oh, but and uh, 
uh you seem like i mean you just you just generally seem like a fun energetic uh personality when you just get into these roles just in general now since i've been talking to you, the past oh, you. Minutes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh like like characters like uh Yotsu like Yotsuba uh, Nakano from the quintessential uh quintuplets like N- Nene Sakura Nene Sakura I think is really underrated I love new game <laughs> a new game yes. from that yeah yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just just in general more I mean like you've played roles like that, that that kind of energetic fast uh comedic uh characters like a lot of them actually uh, do you like feel that you get typecasted in that kind of role in general or because like um, I feel like, you know, having done this for over eight years, the directors know me really well. And so, like, they know that's me. Um, and it's like, for example, with Yotsuba, um, the director for Quintessential Quintuplets is one of my best friends. And so she was like, oh, that's Bryn. That's literally Bryn. She can just come in. And be herself and do reads as if it's just herself talking. And they're going to be so authentic (laughs) and they're going to sound so good that they'll cast me as that because they know that it's it's just going to come so easily and it's just going to be some really solid reads. And I can just like let loose and just let all of my energy out and it works. Um, which is really exciting. And so, <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, like, and another one, um, uh, Hikari Takanashi from, uh, interviews with monster girls. Um, Oh yes. Of, that is also another character that is literally just me in a show. Um, <laughs> and funny enough, um, teach is, uh, Chris George and literally just watching that show, it is us. It is just our <laughs> dynamic, and it's so funny to us. We love it, um, <laughs> and it's it's so funny to watch because we we don't even see the characters. We just see ourselves interacting because we just let all of our our energy, our natural energy, out into these characters, and we acted as if we were acting to the other person, and it worked. Because those characters were us. I, it, it's just, it's gold. And I, I hate that that show is so underrated and that, like, it's so niche that so few people know about it, but it's so good. That show is so good in so many levels of, like, it's, it's a, it's like a slice of life series, but it's, but it's in a weird angle of, like, oh, these are monster girls, but they're not, like, you know, uh, like mo- not like Monster Musume or anything like that. You know, just yeah. like they're cat, they're casual monster girls going to the school that uh, that that's like, oh, there's the ice lady, and then you have the vampire and uh, and stuff. The, the the I guess the most extra the the most extra one would be the girl with the 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 Durandal or whatever the one that's holding yeah. her own head. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, I just love it because like everyone's like totally like it's. I love that 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 dynamic between especially the uh, I forgot her name the the, the vampire and the uh, and the teacher because like that was the very first yeah. one. Yeah, that yeah yeah looked, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. I really hoped I I was hoping they were going to get a second season, but they did not. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Oh, yeah. Oh yes, and uh, uh, I remember your your character from a uh, defrag. Um, um, what's her name? Roca. Um, yes, Roca. I just yes. loved her. I just loved her darkness <laughs> of element ability. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the swan, beware! <laughs> I just love. Oh, she like, was so crazy. <laughs> she was over the top crazy. Like. Um, <laughs> I was like so surprised of like what like what she got away with with some of this stuff like <laughs> and it's so unassuming like she's so <laughs> sweet and then all of a sudden she's just like I attack and it's just it's so <laughs> like what? <laughs> Especially when you have the transitions of like you know how sometimes they have just the eyes with no mouth and then the, the kind of like the dilated eye kind of yeah, look yeah. and it's like the total <laughs> like you know plain look and then all of a sudden she just pounces on you. Oh my gosh, <laughs> such, that was a crazy such a good game. show. Yes, but those kind. Of, well, I guess it tells you though. I mean, those kind of those kind of manic mean man, like manic <laughs> uh, characters really do something for the series. Like like uh, a. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yotsuba is Yotsuba is not my favorite in quintessential like myself as a like to the to the I like her, but it's like uh but I like the girl with the not headphones. That's the one you're rooting for. Yeah, the one I'm rooting for yep. is the girl with the headphones. I forget I forget her name, but like I'm no, so- yeah, I as is everybody. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. I mean, cause I and the way I I I didn't think so. Like mm-hmm. I, I was like, oh no, like Yotsuba's the bro, you know, mm-hmm. like she's the like I got the back, man. We yeah. can do this. It's fine. Let's go. <laughs> let's go get them. We're, we're gonna round everybody up. Oh, we're gonna go scare everybody in the park. Let's do it. We're gonna be spooky as heck. Like I mean, she, she was like the best bro. That's like the wingman. <laughs> the wing, yeah, she's the perfect wingman. Yeah. She, it didn't, it didn't yeah. feel like she had any kind of affection towards uh, towards any like towards uh towards the main dude, and it's like, and that's perfectly fine. But like to me, it's just that uh, I don't know what it is with that girl. I, what what is her name? I can't remember her name. The girl with the headphones. <laughs> but like, uh, 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 she just like I don't know something about her that's like, oh, okay, they they, they are perfect together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. she she definitely has the most want. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is she really that popular? I didn't even know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Man. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I, need to, I need to be back in on the anime scene if that's the case, because that's, wow, I had no idea. But no, I just love, I love how she's written. So that, I'll do yes. it with that. But that's cool. I, I like I like that you enjoy enjoy those roles. <laughs> enjoy those roles itself, though, too. Uh, <laughs> but it's weird because, like, uh, like, you have like I want to talk about like uh uh like your character from like Attack on Titan like Historia Reese or Crystal Lens on Attack on Titan itself um and and its final season uh like stuff is basically getting real now in the epic conclusion yeah uh when I look back in the series like Historia grew enormously like comparatively to any of the other characters I mean I mean characters did grow but she basically personality even the name the name changed too just like right. completely changed out to her uh to her character now playing a character with that level of growth at the beginning to where where she is now like how did like was that a challenge when you were when you were playing her uh uh when you were playing her like uh how was that uh when you uh when you were doing it um well i mean when i started i was still very green um i was st- not like just starting out, but I only had like, I think maybe a year or a year and a half under my belt in the industry. Um, so, and, and it kind of worked because I, I was still very young. And, um, so I still, I had a younger voice. And then, um, as I went on and my voice kind of developed and got stronger, and she got stronger as well, obviously, as we see. And she kind of like dropped all of her pretenses and just allowed herself to not be that like – she wasn't ever fragile. I don't want to say fragile, but that softer kind of character um, and just really stepped into herself Um it, it, it kind of lended itself to that. And I, th- I don't, I don't know if it was so much about like that she turned into someone else. I think she always had it in her, mm-hmm. but she finally let go and let herself become this strong person. Um, there was definitely a lot of character growth, but I think it it was really more of a just stop trying to be this this soft, sweet thing that you're not, you know, be who you are. And I think that's that's really what we're we see throughout her journey. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the people that she meets and um the experiences that she goes through and you know obviously the uh reuniting with her father um and the interactions with emir um and yeah i i i think that she had to make a lot of difficult choices that have just like aged her 
significantly. I mean, and you can see it not, you don't just hear it. You see it in the art. I mean, like from the first season, when we first get to see her, she looks so young and fresh and bright. And if you look at her now, I mean, she looks so like worn. She really looks worn. I mean, and that's just what this has done to everybody. They all do. Um, and we really, we, we wanted to have it reflected in how we kind of carried ourselves, like not carried ourselves, but like vocally carried ourselves um, because they're not going to be that bright, ready to go, let's do this kind of energy anymore. They're, they're battle worn. They, they've lived it. They've, they're not exhausted, but they're burned, you know, they're, they're, they're burn out they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're they've lived it yeah so yeah well i mean like at the very beginning i i thought that she was going to be uh, basically a giant food because like i didn't think right. that he was yeah right. like like because like you know, uh, she's she's that like we've got to stick together everybody you know like and <laughs> and it's like oh she means so well she doesn't know how to take care of herself like <laughs> Because you always had Emir that Emir was the one that was always like, you know, she was like, she was taking care of her, but she wasn't mm-hmm. taking care of her, you know, like she like to be, she was like, there were, she always got, had her back. So most of the, most of the, uh, the, the, the issues and stuff was really kind of felt like it was weighing on Amir's side more than it did on her side initially. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So then when stuff went down and when he met, when she met her, her dad and stuff that, that's like i kind of felt that like you know that whole thing is that's when the 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 flip with the the switch was flipped a little bit where she was mm-hmm. like starting to kind of get more into her own as an individual like you were saying uh, and uh uh and she's and like uh, and it just comes to real then you realize oh there's more to her than what we right. what we initially saw and i was like oh wow, that's like, okay, well, okay, let's see where this is going to go, you know? So, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and you kind of wonder, like, looking back on season one, how much of this is this character, this Krista character that she's put on? Mm-hmm. You know, or, like, you just have to wonder, like, how, how much is inspired by this character from the book that her sister gave her? Like, how <laughs> much is really her? How much is this character, like, is the side that was really her what got her in that in the top 10 like mm-hmm. you, you or you just yeah, wonder so yeah i yeah. thought that she just like oh well i just thought that she well did, did she know that she was historia or like uh, like or, or was she lied to i i guess i i didn't understand like uh like when he met when she met um ivan I was like, uh, d- like, did she, did he reveal the truth to her there, or because like it just seemed like she just went with it after you know the whole that that whole story arc, and because uh, uh, like if that was the case, I thought that she just basically made a persona to get in to the for uh, get into the uh, uh, the military with Crystal Lens, and I thought basically all that was a lie. That's how I personally uh, depicted it. But I mean, I mean, I, I think it was it was it was a way to like escape mm-hmm. from like I mean, sh- seeing what happened to her family. I mean, her sister like disappeared on her, and that was really who raised her. I mean, mm-hmm. that was her support. And then seeing what happened to the rest of her family. <laughs> I mean, I I would do anything that I I could do to hide myself away and to escape and to do anything that would protect myself and and right. turn into somebody else mm-hmm. you know and hide myself away yeah oh uh, well okay yeah that's that's true no i mean i just love yeah i well I, yeah i definitely loved like where she well not fully because like you know, like it's a battle worn now and everything and all that's going down i can't, i really can't wait to see how this is going to end uh from uh, uh for this but uh yeah but you, de- you definitely you definitely did a great job uh, uh playing her so definitely love uh, thank you love so much keep it up. yes definitely uh all right well the last thing 
to the uh, last question I'm going to ask because uh, we're pretty much running out of time here. Uh, oh. Like <laughs> uh, uh, the conve- like convention wise, um, like what conventions uh, will uh, will you be attending so fans can uh, fans can meet you? Uh, yeah. Um- I've actually got one coming up real soon. <laughs> uh, it's on. Let me uh, let me double check on the date there. Actually, um, I'm going to be in Neosho, Missouri, at ArtCon, uh, and that's just a one day convention, and it is on February fifth, uh, Saturday, February fifth, and so that'll be really cool if you're anywhere in the area in Missouri um, <laughs> of Neo show um, and you want to head over to ArtCon, uh, you should definitely do it. It's really cool. And I will be there and I'll be signing some prints and I'll do a panel and yeah, it would be really cool. And uh, like I said, I am working on my Twitch channel and it should be up and running soon. Um, it's just my name. It's Bryn April and it's Bryn April on Twitter as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, that that's good. Oh, okay. I got to keep, I'll, I'll write that down. <laughs> like I said, I'm looking, <laughs> I am definitely going to swing by on your Twitch uh, on this. But, uh, <clears throat> Brent, thank you so much for uh, geeking out with uh, with me today. It was a, it was a pleasure talking to you about uh, all sorts thank of things. Thank you. Here. I had so much fun. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And, uh, guys, uh, you could uh, check out this, uh, this awesome interview on our website, confreaksandgeeks.com. One option, other option, go to our YouTube page, the CFG channel, uh, where we will post the video, uh, the v- uh, video of this, or you could check this out on any other podcasts, uh, podcast stations like Apple, Google podcasts, Stitcher radio, what have you. We have, uh, we're on everything out there. So, guys, this is Davis signing off. Y'all, take it easy. <clears throat>